So this bike might be one of the most confusing yet versatile bikes I've reviewed on the channel. Is it a mountain bike? Is it a gravel bike? Or is it just a bike bike? Today we're going to take a look at the Ritchie Ascent, find out what I like and dislike about it in this video. Before we get started, let me tell you about today's sponsor, you guys. Every time you buy a sticker, a patch, a stem cap, a print, or join us on Patreon, you personally help keep this channel independent. This channel is heavily reliant on sticker sales. Like I said, I'm mostly a sticker salesman with a YouTube channel. So if you appreciate our videos, do check out the links in the description below. The Richie Ascent, let's get into it. The frame and fork are steel, triple butted, heat treated chromoly and lots of things that just tickle my fancy. First off, it's externally routed. You guys know I love that. This bike also has all the mounts. It's got three pack mounts. You can run a front rack and fenders. Same thing in the rear, rack and fender mounts, so tons of utility. It's also rocking that inch and an eighth non-tapered head tube, which is a bit of a rarity these days. The idea behind this is that because it's not so built up, there is some natural compliance. Rather than the weird modern backwards way of doing things where you have a super stiff head tube and you try to soften up with shocks, the Richie approach is just to kind of get it right the first time and build that compliance into the frame itself. But I think it makes sense and it does create a more noticeable softer ride. The frame has a slipping top tube, so this makes it a perfect candidate for a dropper post or a suspension seat post of some sort. It is rocking boost spacing, so you gotta use a modern mountain bike uh, wheel set and crank. Tire clearance is pretty generous. You've got room for 27.5 by 2.6 or 29 by 2.6. The frame size I rode was a size medium and it worked really well for me, both in drops and alt bar mode. So let's look at the build of this bike because it is Pretty baller, I'd say. First off, the wheel set is by Phil Wood. These beautiful purple anodized hubs, which were machined in the US in San Jose. They partnered with a company in Canada to make these carbon hoops. The tires are by Rene Urs. They are the Umtanum, so they are 27.5 by 55. Nice big fat meats, and they've got this kind of alternating small block pattern, which supposedly has some noise canceling abilities. More on the tires a little bit later. The brakes are some purple anodized Paul clampers, which are just baller. You guys know I love them. I've done multiple videos on the clampers. If you're curious how they perform, uh, look it up on the interweb. Moving up to the controls, I tested it with the coyote bars. What's cool about them is they have a forward sweep before they sweep back. What this means is if you're converting a bar from drops to the coyotes, there's a good chance that you won't have to change your stem to compensate for the handlebars because they don't just shoot backwards, they go forwards first and your, your relative hand position should be about the same. The brake levers are purple Paul love levers, which have both a crisp yet somewhat soft feel to them, if you know what I mean. Kind of boxy, industrial, but a nice rounded and matte feel to them. The shifter you gotta love is a micro shift Barcon that's adapted to this bar, the Paul Thummy adapter. You can, you can shift both indexed or friction. I actually prefer friction. That's how I ran it mostly. The beauty with this setup is if you were to swap bars for a drop bar, you can reuse that bar con, just put it in the bar end. I did ride it with drop bars and in that configuration, it was set up with the Ritchie Venture Max, which you guys know that I love. Moving to the cranks, they are the M30 Boost by White Industries. These are also made in the US, machined in Petaluma. And the cool thing about them is that they're surprisingly light. 570 grams for the arms, the ring, and the spindle. You can also use these same crank arms to go two by if you want. They've got their whole variable bolt circle thing going on. So you can go from one by to two by, same crank arm. In the rear, nothing too splashy, just a Dior rear derailleur and an 11 to 50 tooth Sunrace cassette for that big budget mullet range. <laughs> All right, so that's the frame and components. A lot to talk about there. A, a lot of blingy parts, but I know what you're thinking, how does the bike ride? If I were to think of an adjective, it would be smooth. This is a very smooth bike. <laughs> Starting in the rear, it has a really long chainstay by today's standards, so 463. Compare that with your typical gravel bike, which is usually around the 430, 425, 415 range. This is definitely in the opposite direction. That longer chainstay length just really smooths out the ride of this bike, makes it super stable, increases the wheelbase. It also moves the rear wheel uh, from below you to a little bit further back. So when you hit bumps, you don't feel like you're getting punched in the butt, which is 
not a fun feeling, I guess. In terms of the front end of the bike, it's got a 70.5 degree head tube angle. The calculated trail with these tires is 69. That number is a little bit deceiving. However, I feel like it rides like an even higher trail bike than that. That really comes down to the tires. The tires are fairly wide and if you run it at fairly low pressures, there's kind of a, a stickiness to them. Slightly self-steering, self-centering. So for me, the bike actually felt like it had a higher trail, like in the upper 70s, low 80s, but it was somewhat dependent on the tire pressure. Hopefully this is making sense here. Going uphill, the bike is smooth and steady. Standing on the pedals, you don't get that jumpy and, and jerky quick accelerations as you would with a shorter chainstay bike, but smooth and steady, chillax, but nice. On flat gravel roads and on descents, this is where the bike really shines. The handling is nice and predictable in the front, unless you hit some really gnarly and chunky stuff. It's pretty well composed and predictable. Overall, I'd say the bike is really well balanced. That smooth and comfy rear uh, play, plays well with that kind of chillax higher trail front end. Like I mentioned, I tested the bike both with the coyote bars as well as some drop bars. In big broad strokes, it felt pretty similar, but I did notice some differences. In drop bar mode, I did notice that I had more weight over the front and that kind of exacerbated that high trail feeling. Compare that with the coyote bars, which are slightly set back, the handling felt noticeably lighter to me. And because of that, when I was in alt bar mode, I could run lower pressure without the tires creating that self-steering effect. Another place where I noticed a difference between the drops and the sweat bar mode was on steep dirt climbs. I found when I was in the drop standing and climbing on something, you know, let's say 12, 12 and above percent, there was a tendency to lose a little bit of traction in the rear tire. However, with the sweat back bars, I felt like maybe my weight was a little bit more on top of the rear tire and I wasn't breaking traction quite as easily. Again, these are my experiences. Yours could be completely different. If I were to choose a configuration, my favorite would actually be the alt bar mode. It just felt really smooth, but the steering was still kind of light and nimble. What did I like and not like about the bike? The first big like is versatility and utility. It's got all the mounts. The other big like is that it's externally routed, super easy to maintain. If you want to do a bar switcheroo, you don't need to dig around the frame to, to swap cables. Another big like was just the ride. If you're looking for a super comfortable and smooth ride, this is your bike, my friends. In terms of dislikes, there actually wasn't a whole lot. Definitely had preferences towards the alt bar mode. One thing is maybe the tires, and this isn't a dislike so much as an asterisk to be aware of. I found that the wider a tire gets, the more apparent there is a floor to the tire pressure. So for, for example, if you pump a tire up too high, it feels like you're riding a basketball, not, not very fun. Likewise, with tires beyond 50 millimeters, I found that if you ride them too low, they start to adversely affect the handling of the bike. This isn't specific to these Renéers tires. I've experienced the same thing with some uh, G Schwabi G1s. But if you have them too low, especially in the front, as you twist the handlebar, the bottom part of the tire still wants to go straight. This is kind of what I mean by self-steering. And it just, the handling feels sticky. It's hard to maneuver. You really want to pay attention to your tire pressure. For me, the floor or the basement tire pressure was actually fairly high. I think things started to get weird once I dipped below 20, so I'd probably stay in that you know, 22, 23 uh, PSI range. Looking at the tire, you'd think you could run a lot lower, and you can, but the handling gets weird. Another potential con of this bike is that I think it confuses people. I mean, it, it looks like a mountain bike if you put flat bars or alt bars on it, but compared to kind of modern progressive geo, it is, it is not a mountain bike. Head tube angle isn't super slack. It doesn't neatly fit that modern mountain bike box. At the same time, it doesn't fit the gravel race bike box either. Chainstays are way longer than you would see on a typical gravel bike. If anything, this bike is kind of like a touring uh, mountain bike, if you will. So if you took a long haul trucker and kind of supersized the clearance and made it with lighter and nicer steel, then, you, then you'd get pretty close to the Richie. So I, I think that's one difficulty with this bike is that it doesn't fit in these predefined categories very well. If I were to describe this bike in one sentence, in, in a lot of ways, it's the modern spiritual successor to, let's say, uh, a Rivendell. It's, it's comfy and chill like a Rivendell, but unlike a Riv, you know, it's got disc brakes, it's got boost spacing. The stack reach is a little bit more aggressive. 
but fills that similar uh, vague box of practical, fun, and smooth bike. That's what I think about the Ritchie Ascent. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. And if you love independent, nerdy uh, bike reviews, please consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon, buying a poster, pin, sticker, patch, all that good stuff. And as always, keep the supple side down.